There are new measures in place to protect migrant children following the death of another child in U.S. custody. It's day five of the partial government shutdown, and the president is vowing to keep the government closed until he gets more money for his border wall. And the American Heart Association wants kids to get more active, something that could prep kids for success. This is News 3 at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 today after Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa to everyone. Let's head to the Weather Center now. Chris Reese is here. Not the Weather Center. He's sitting right here. Chris <laughs> Reese is here. We'll look at our first alert forecast. It's, it's the Weather Center seat. The weather, That's what yes, we the will call it. area of the desk. <laughs> it's, it's been a nice day so yeah, far, okay. honestly. We've had a lot of cloud cover around, and still, that cloud cover continues to be on the increase along with our temperatures, which I think will have the chance to warm up another degree or two. The cloud cover moving in is really going to begin to slow down the warming of those temperatures, but we're at 37 degrees right now. Winds are out of the east and northeast at seven miles per hour. 36 down in Janesville, 34 in the Dells, 32 for Camp Douglas and Black River Falls. Milwaukee and Kenosha always just a little bit warmer there at 39 and 42. But as we zoom things out, things are colder as you work your way across the upper Midwest. 14 in Fargo, North Dakota right now. When you go from 14 there to 46 in Peru, Illinois, we call this area a Barrett Clinic Zone. That's fancy terms for this is the area where a storm system will develop. And we're going to be watching that as we go through the rest of tonight. Already this storm system has been developing. We've got some snow already getting ready to fly across parts of North Dakota and western Minnesota. That's going to be on the increase for them. But we're on the warm side of the storm, which means rain chances are going to be going up for us. We're going to be watching that. But in the meantime, if you have any travel plans to the nation's midsection mid or the upper plains, do know that you are going to be dealing with a pretty powerhouse winter storm. I wouldn't be surprised to see some blizzard warnings come out as we head into this afternoon once that wind increases for them. But in the meantime, we're going to be quiet here in Madison. Expect those highs right around 38 degrees. And coming up in just a few minutes, Mark, I'll break down what we can expect here in Madison and when the rain will get in here. A bear clinic? Barrow clinic. Barrow clinic. A, yes. A bear clinic. Bear clinic. I actually like that. Yeah. I have to steal it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it Anytime. Nice. The commissioner of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection is ordering new steps to protect migrant children in custody. This comes after another child dies in custody. It's the second death of a child in the agency's care this month. Mole Lange has more. Customs and Border Protection says it is conducting secondary medical checks on all children under 10 years old in its custody after an 8-year-old boy from Guatemala died on Christmas Eve. It was actually a Border Patrol agent who noticed that the child did not appear uh, to be well. Agents noticed 8-year-old Felipe Gomez Alonzo was coughing and appeared to have glossy eyes. He was taken to the hospital where he was diagnosed and treated for a common cold. Less than an hour later, he registered a fever of 103 and was released with a prescription for an antibiotic and ibuprofen. That evening, the boy appeared to be nauseous and vomited. His father declined further medical assistance. Three hours later, authorities say Felipe was lethargic and nauseous again. There was no EMT on duty, so agents sent him back to the hospital. On the way, he lost consciousness, could not be revived, and was pronounced dead at 11.48 p.m. This administration has put deterrence and enforcement ahead of humane treatment of people. On CBS This Morning, the Commissioner of U.S. Customs and Border Protection said his agency's facilities are not designed for the huge flow of migrant children. We need help from Congress. Uh, we need to budget for medical care and mental health care uh, for children in our facilities. This is the second death of a migrant child in U.S. custody this month. It comes amid a standoff between President Trump and Congress over funding for a border wall. On Monday, the body of seven-year-old Jacqueline Cal was buried in her hometown in Guatemala. She died a day after being taken into custody. Her father had alerted agents that she was sick. Mola Lange, CBS News, the White House. And the Guatemalan Foreign Ministry has called for an investigation into the deaths. President Trump says parts of the federal government will stay closed until Democrats agree to put up more walls along the U.S.-Mexico border. Yesterday, the president said that there has to be some kind of barrier to halt the flow of illegal immigrants, drugs, and human trafficking. When asked if the $5 billion he wants for the wall is a firm number, 
Well, he left that open. Instead, the president referred to the more general border security package he asked for from Congress. It's complicated because we're getting $25 billion. It's already approved, but that's for everything. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said last week that he will not bring up a vote unless there's a compromise bill. About 800,000 government workers are affected by the shutdown. Many of them are on the job, but they won't be paid again until after the shutdown ends. Madison police are looking for two teens who allegedly robbed a man overnight. It happened around midnight near Warner Park. The person who was robbed said he left a relative's home nearby to walk to a gas station when the suspects pointed a gun at his head. They took his cash before running away. Anyone with information asked to call Madison police or the Madison Area Crime Stoppers. Dozens of animals died during a barn fire early this morning. The barn was in Shawano County. 30 cows, 8 horses, cats, dogs and chickens all died. Firefighters are still trying to determine a cause but don't think it was suspicious. An area woman is getting some financial help for her nonprofit. AARP gave Monica Kamal Spani a $60,000 prize to help her expand Accessibility Wisconsin, which rents all-terrain wheelchairs to people with mobility issues. She's hoping it'll help jumpstart even more donations to help her expand Accessibility Wisconsin. Right now, the service has reach in seven counties in Wisconsin, but she wants to expand to all 72. She said that will allow even more people to experience the independence of the all-terrain chair. It feels wonderful to have people be able to access the outdoors and then they have this big smile and this cloud is lifted up like, wow, I get to see the birds again or the deer again. And they get to do it independently. It's not somebody pushing them around. If you are interested in renting a chair, you just have to go to the organization's website, accessibilitywi.org. Then you select your county and you pay a $50 deposit, which you can either give back or donate. The public library in Lodi is back open. This comes after it was closed earlier this month due to mold damage. It was found during a remodel of the basement. A professional mold removal team was hired immediately to address the issue. They say the most recent air quality tests came back clean. A nationwide program from the American Heart Association is trying to keep kids active in school to address both their physical and emotional well-being. The Kids Heart Challenge includes a daily 20-minute exercise routine in the morning to help kids wake up and get their brains going. It also includes brain breaks throughout the day to help kids keep focused. Experts say kids who are active have better physical health, brain function and attention spans in class. Some schools are also mixing different classes together for the morning warm-up sessions to help teach social skills. You're gonna have a five-year-old look up to a seven-year-old and learn from them and experience this is being nice to younger people. So it's just one of these, it's a win-win. Recent guidelines from the American Heart Association say kids ages 3 to 5 should have 3 hours a day of light to moderate exercise, while kids ages 6 to 17 should get at least 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous activities every day. There's more to come on News 3 at noon. I'm next. We'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. One holiday might be over, but another one starts today. What is it? And what's on the menu? We'll show you.
I hope you had a Merry Christmas. Did you realize that today marks the first day of the week-long celebration called Kwanzaa? For those of you who aren't familiar with Kwanzaa, it's a time that honors African heritage by celebrating family, community, and its culture. So to celebrate it, we came up with a recipe that we think is very fitting. We start by placing a cut up chicken in a plastic storage bag, then adding some soy sauce, vegetable oil, a little bit of rum, jerk seasoning, and a few slices of red onion. We're gonna let that marinate a few hours, or even better, overnight. Once it's well marinated, we drain it and place the chicken and the onions in a baking dish and into the oven they go until no pink remains and the skin starts to crisp up. Now, while that's roasting, we can whip up a quick side dish to serve with it, which is simply a bag of coleslaw mix that we toss with a bunch of colorful veggies and a two-ingredient dressing. And although this is perfect for Kwanzaa, it's also great after all those holiday leftovers are used up. It's one of those dishes that's so simple, yet so satisfying, that everyone comes back for seconds. The recipe for what we call jerk-style chicken and the Kwanzaa slaw are both online now, so you can enjoy them tonight or any night that you want something easy and special. I'm Howard of the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we're looking for a festive way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, thank you. We could see some rain and snow developing overnight. Chris Reese shares with what we can expect in a few minutes during our first alert forecast. Better news on Wall Street, it opens in the green and pack your patience for the post-holiday gift returns. Wendy Gillette has more in today's Money Watch report.
markets open higher amid a rough month here on Wall Street. The Dow is on track for its worst year since 2008 and its worst December since 1931. The lawyer for the longtime secretary of Bernie Madoff says she should be released from prison in March. That's when 70-year-old Annette Bongiorno will have served two-thirds of her six-year prison term. Her attorney cited a law that permits judges to order some prisoners released to home confinement. She was among five Madoff employees convicted for their roles in history's biggest Ponzi scheme that cost thousands of investors about $20 billion. Amazon says it broke records this holiday season. The online retailer says more items were ordered around the world than ever before. Some of the most popular toys included the LOL Surprise Glam Glitter Series doll, Crayola Inspiration Art Case, and Lego creator Mighty Dinosaur. And gift returns begin in earnest today. Retailers try to capitalize by lowering prices in stores, hoping you'll buy instead of just exchanging or returning. The National Retail Federation estimates 50% of consumers will take advantage of post-holiday sales in stores, and 45% will head online. More than a quarter of shoppers will use gift cards they got as presents. That's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Wendy Gillette. Wendy, thank you. Let's look at the Dow numbers at noon. It's the industrials up 436 points. The Nasdaq up 178. Q106 Farm Director Pam Yankee is out of the radio barn today. So here are your farm numbers. Well, good Wednesday afternoon to all of you guys. We do have an alert day in the forecast. That is mainly for tonight with some snow and freezing rain. It's mainly going to be north of Madison. And again, it's not a big deal at all. But if you're going to be traveling up north, we just want folks to be aware of the potential. We'll touch on that in just a sec. For now, the clouds have been increasing as we have gone through the day. The temperatures have also been gradually increasing. We are now at 37 degrees. Winds out of the east northeast at 7 miles per hour. We're going to be keeping that cloud cover around as we go through today, but temperatures are warmer than they were 24 hours ago. This time yesterday, the temperature was 30. You had some snow on the ground from that little white Christmas morning that you guys had here. Unfortunately, I was not here in town for that, but I heard it was beautiful. But temperatures now still on the warmer side at 37 degrees, 41 now down at Janesville. So they are finally starting to warm things up just a little bit as well. 34 in the Dells, same for Camp Douglas. And all of us are starting to see those temperatures above freezing. But as you work away farther towards the north and west, that's where the colder air is gradually trying to push its way towards the south. As it does so, you are going to have a storm system that will develop and work its way between that. We're already starting to see the clouds increasing along with the rain and the snow back to our west. It's the entire midsection of the country that is going to be influenced by this powerhouse of a thunderstorm. I mean, we are talking severe weather across parts of Texas and heavy snows that will fly across the northern plains and parts of the upper Midwest. Here in Madison, we're going to be on the warm side of this system, so we are not expecting much in the way of wintry weather. But where it's happening, you do have plenty of winter storm warnings in play. Some of those could be blizzard warnings as we go farther into the afternoon. Here's why we have this really intense region of low pressure coming out of the Texas panhandle. As it does so, it's going to be bringing a lot of rain into southern Wisconsin and a lot of snow on the backhand side of that. Now it is possible that as this low moves away, we could see some back end wraparound snows 
here in the Madison area. It shouldn't amount to much, but nonetheless, some snowfall is possible as we head into your Friday. But hour by hour through the rest of today, we'll see those temperatures warming up another degree or two towards about 38 to 39 degrees. Later on tonight, we'll watch a weak little band of rain and snow come in. That'll move to the north replaced with heavy rainfall as we go through your Thursday. Some of that could be on the heavier side. I mean, we are talking upwards of perhaps three quarters of an inch towards one inch of rain falling out of the sky through this. That's a lot of rain for this time of the year. Typically, these systems don't bring that much, but the other story will simply be the impact. We are going to see some major travel delays across the north and west, and with the light snow potential on Friday, it's possible to see some light to moderate snow delays or travel delays around here, but even still, it does not look to be a major deal. Temperatures are going to be coming back down closer to average once we get through that. So for tonight do or this afternoon, expect those temperatures right around 38 degrees, cooling down tonight to about 34 with a little bit of a mix going over towards all rain as we head into your Thursday and Friday. Some sunshine for the weekend and to start the new year and we'll have a chance for snow the first Thursday of the new year as well. So if you're heading north and west, be aware. Yeah, if you're headed north and west tomorrow, you will certainly see some major delays from that. All right, Chris, thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Well, the oldest working barber in the world is making sure his clients look and feel their best this holiday season. Hillary Lane has more. In this small town in upstate New York. Gonna get a haircut? Yes, please. Yeah, okay. Its oldest resident. Tight, tight. Lower the ears a little bit. Is still at work. How old am I? 107. Wow. 107. <laughs> Anthony Mancinelli is in the Guinness Book of World Records. What does it feel like to be the oldest barber in the world? Uh, I don't know. Just happy I'm still a barber. 
A full-time barber still putting in 40 hours a week. So just keep on going. Boy, I'd be tired by now. I'm sure of that. What advice do you have for people to live to your age? I advise a lot of people to not to quit working, keep busy. 96 years ago, Mancinelli started cutting hair at the age of 11. Well, that's what I told my father. I want to help out in the family. Mancinelli went on to have a family of his own. He was married for 69 years. I miss her. I go to the cemetery every day before I come to work. His son, Bob, is 85. He's in better shape than I am, and he's still going, still working five days a week. And I retired when I was 81. Mr. Mancinelli has no plans to slow down. How much longer are you going to be cutting hair, Anthony? I don't know. Until you can't? Keep going. God bless you. Mancinelli says he'll keep going to keep the younger generation looking sharp. Hillary Lane, CBS News, New Windsor, New York. And the barber turns 108 years old in March. He still lives on his own, cooking and cleaning for himself. He also drives himself to work every day. So, Chris, you got a ways to go. 108. I uh, know. That's a long time. But, hey, would you all deal with me for about another 100 years? Yeah, we, I mean, yes, you know. We, yes, we will. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Speaking for everyone, yes. <laughs> we do still have uh, some more cloud cover to go through as we go through the rest of today. We'll see some light rain and snow overnight. 40s for Thursday. All right, that's our time for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at 4. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.